Not yet. No. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining me. I am Sharice Arrowwood, Senior Director of Identity with Unicon. So today, the topic I want to uh, share about is all about getting involved with Aperio. Um, I'm really excited. This is pretty much I'm going to guide the discussion, but I'd really like some interaction if you so choose. Uh, so please reach out and don't be shy. You have uh, access to uh, audio. All right. So the first thing I wanted to start with is just really this quote. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we could do so much. It pretty much says it all. And that's what community is all about, right? It's working together. It's coming together. It's supporting each other based on, you know, what we all have in common. And that's what I really want to focus on. Uh, this community has so much opportunity for growth, so much back to give to higher education specifically, that um, it's really just us kind of getting down to the basics and reminding each other what it's all about. So I wanted to share a little bit about Unicon before we get into the details of uh, Aperio and adoption and, and how you can get there, just in case you're not aware. So Unicon is a software consulting firm specifically focused on the education ecosystem. What that really means is we care about all learners from K through 12 to workforce. Our sweet spot is primarily higher education where we've worked for over 27 years. We've been involved in many open sources, excuse me, open source communities um, a perio for years and years. Um, and we're definitely supporters, both from a traditional sense, meaning that we uh, sponsor individuals that work with Unicon to work in the community on these projects month in, month out, as well as we have many people that just enjoy it. Um, they do things on their own, on their own time and extra with, as far as their professional development and such. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, it's a great opportunity that Unicon actually offers to our staff. So here you see a list of individuals. These are just a few names that if you're active in the community, you may have seen uh, for both CAS and UPortal projects because those are the two where Unicon is very, very involved. All right, so I'm gonna get down a little bit more detail about what we do. And this is all because I really, the, the discussion again is about getting involved and why you get involved, but also seeing what other people are doing. Right. So this is specifically Unicon's um, ARC participation and collaboration on the CAS project. I'm going to go in and show you more. I'm not going to go through these details because that's not what's important here. What's important is the willingness to collaborate, to participate, to listen to what the needs are of the community. Uh, we work day in, day out with higher education institutions. We hear about the pain points. We understand the gaps. We understand, you know, the concerns that they run into on a daily basis. So we work within these projects that Aperio sponsors, basically, to assist and to expand and to ensure that they are secure and they are really worthwhile projects. So they will continue to be adopted. So again, these are just some things on CAS proper. These are some things that I've mentioned as far as CAS management. And please know this is not an extensive list by far. Um, many, actually hundreds, over thousands of hours actually go into these applications um, every year because of the way we have things set up. Um, again, to give you some examples of some of our um, involvement in the community, and here's some with you portal. So you're going to notice that there's not just hands on the keyboard involvement here. We have leadership positions. We have management positions. We have people who help with the testing of the output of the projects. We have people who assist with documentation, right? It's all those different people. If you were in the sessions earlier today, we talked about, you know, some of the value of open source and of the Aperio projects. And do you need to have technical expertise on site at the institutions and you really don't why because the community has done a great job of providing information the community provides documentation they provide guidance sometimes even ad hoc using those you know email lists the dev lists the uh, forums that are promoted the jira applications um, but again there's no sla attached right so those are all different opportunities for possible assistance but You've always got the documentation and these projects do a fabulous job of making sure there's updated documentation to help with that initial deployment, the configuration, uh, kind of the gotchas, right? In case of emergency, how do you troubleshoot out of this issue? 
Um, so that's, you know, that's really what it's about. It's about coming together and creating these, this volume of applications that allow for issues to be resolved and for goals to be met. So now let's dig into getting involved. Why would you want to get involved? If I haven't convinced you already, let's go over some more specifics. And again, shout out if you want to join in the discussion. So being part of the community, right? And driving forward those enhancements, those advancements of those projects that you want to see, maybe that your institution is interested in. Be the leader, be the front runner and join the community. You will get people to collaborate with you, right? This is this is a geek fest in a very good, awesome way. There's very talented people that are involved here. They enjoy what they're doing. They appreciate and see the value of open source. And that's they're going to continue to be involved. So you will never be alone. Uh, sustainability of the projects, that's a big one. It's great that we have those projects here and now, but if they don't continue to grow, pick up the, you know, the new enhancements that they need, that they deserve, and that, that higher education really stresses to have for their students, their staff, their faculty, guess what? They're not going to be sustainable. They're not going to be around. So they need you. They need you, the community, to get involved. We can't rely on a small set of, set, subset of people, of individuals, to carry these forward. We need more people to collaborate. Uh, support education technology for higher education. If you believe in higher education, there's another great reason. There's a huge value, right? We need this help. Um, we, we need new eyes, right? Look at it from a different perspective. You will see if you look at the history of the code, if you look at the history of the articles and the blogs and the variety of communications, even at the conferences, there are many of the same individuals which says a lot, right? It's fantastic because these individuals want to stay involved in the Aperio projects. They believe in them. They believe in the value of what the projects bring to higher education and they care. They care about really the learners and being able to help them advance into success. But we need to mix it up once in a while, right? We need some new eyes. We need some new hands. We need some new perspectives. Bring, include, or excuse me, bring to the table what's already there. Enhance that collaboration. Uh, which brings us right into that next item of technical collaboration with other like-minded individuals. Th if this is your thing, you're going to love it because that's what it's all about. It's about sharing what you love, the value, education, the tools, right? Get in there and do your technical miracles and magic and collaborate with others on how to enhance it just a little bit to meet another goal that we might have. It's fantastic. Um, I, your ideas and expertise could be the next thing, right? Maybe you are an introvert. Maybe you are shy. Uh, you know what? That's okay. Cause guess what? There's a ton of people just like you that are in this community because you don't have to be the face of the project. There's people that want to jump in and do that, right? You hear from those people and we need those people to stand up for the projects, to communicate those things about the project, but we need a whole community community that really ties those individuals together, right? That really makes and enhance those projects what they are. And that could be you. So don't, don't sell yourself short. Anybody is, should have the opportunity and does have the opportunity to join the Aperio community and really assist with the projects as they move forward. And the last item I had here is keep the control and flexibility in the hands of the users, right? We did a lot of comparing earlier today in the sessions about proprietary versus open source and what's the value and, you know, how does open source really meet the needs that we have? And a lot of it was about transparency, right? Um, it's about listening to the higher education um, uh, members, constituents, users, what do they need? What are those issues? And again, as I said earlier, not only do we have individuals who work on the projects, but their backgrounds are in higher education. Many of them work in higher education today. So they see the need, they believe in the need, and they participate. And that's what we're asking from you is for you to join the community, to be a participant and be an active participant. So now how do you get involved? Well, there are a lot of different ways to get involved. Um, let's kind of start here. And again, please feel free to jump in if you want to. You can devote time directly to the community. Pick, you, pick the project that you want. And really, it all, if you look at the documentation for each of the individual projects, they'll tell you how to get involved, 
right? They've got mail lists, both user and development. So technical, non-technical. Uh, They'll talk about the way their projects are laid out. If they have a PMC team, right? They have a chair. They have a team that really facilitates uh, the releases. And based on the feedback that comes in, they discuss and they prioritize. But the more feedback, the, getter, the better. They're looking for consistency. So again, just devote your time directly to the project of your choice. Another perspective is to commit institutional resources, right? So make that something that's important to you at your institution. We want everybody to spend, you know, 10 hours out in the community. Pick your poison. What works, you know, for you? What makes you feel good and motivates you? And what's going to help the institution at the same time? If you're using a variety of these awesome tools, um, these projects that exist under the Aperio umbrella, get some people to contribute their time and sponsor them, right? Commit them. Uh, possibly financially sponsor individuals or vendors on behalf of your school or organization. So maybe you don't have the resources at the institution to say, you know, I want you to devote X time. But you know what? There are plenty of vendors or even individuals, other people that would love to spend their time doing that. So sometimes the financial bump is always the incentive that's needed. So think about that opportunity. And last but definitely not least, do it just because you love open source, you see the value and you want to help higher education. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the needs. So there's needs from A to Z. Think of the software development life cycle, right? Think about the overall management, the team lead structure that you'd like to have in place. Think about, uh, of course, the, the hands on the keyboard, the engineers, the development, uh, the discuss, discuss, excuse me, <laughs> the discussion, the collaboration, the brainstorming to get the hands on the keyboard. Because what do they do, right? They want to meet the needs to help higher education. How do they get that information? How do they know the specifics? It all comes from knowing it because you're part of a higher education, but really collaborating on it, right? Let's find the best of the best and enhance these products to meet needs across the board, not just stream, um, not just make it very specific, right? For one user or one set, set of users. And that's what the goal of these projects are, is to make sure they're meeting the general needs of higher education. So we need those people to come in and collaborate and brainstorm with them. We need help testing. That's a big one. People kind of forget, you know, just because you build it. Yeah, they'll come. But guess what? They might not stay if it's really not what you counted on it being right. And yes, it's open source. And again, what do people think? Oh, but they're donating the time. Maybe it'll be tested. Maybe they won't. My previous slide really is an example of how to enhance what open source is representing. Right. It should and it can represent the full development life cycle. Now, depending upon the volunteers and the support that we have, that's going to be a little lopsided uh, depending upon the availability and the resource roles that are actually in the community. But this is a good example, something that Unicon assists with is the testing element, because we see that's a little bit of a weak leap link from here and there. Um, DevOps, let's make sure there's the automation in place, right? Don't rely on just the teams that are there to deal with everything. Um, people are going to participate in the community because of many reasons, but ultimately they wanna be doing what they're enjoying. So if they're engineers, they really don't wanna do documentation. If they're you know, uh, SMEs and testing experts, they really don't wanna be you know, in the leadership role. They wanna be in the ingrained in the detail and testing and working with the engineers to resolve those items that they identify. Um, the other item on here, the big one, is spread the word. That's what we need, right? That's why I'm here, is to really share that Aperio has a great set of projects. And obviously, you know that you're here. But we need people to help be more involved, to spread the word, to get other people involved. And don't assume they can just go to a mail list and ask a question, and the little tiny team that's out there should answer every question and resolve everything that you know they have questions about. They should become part of that team. They can understand a bit more. They can help to collaborate, expand that community. And then guess what? The team will be able to answer a lot more questions. We will be able to provide more documentation. We will be able to even increase the overall level of products that we provide, which are pretty darn good, especially with all the institutions that are already running these projects in production environments. That says a ton. 
All right, so here's all the projects just to remind everybody, right? So what do we want you to do? We want you to join the community, get start doing, be a collaborator, be a leader, be part of a great team. There are tons of great teams here. They're all underneath these projects. They believe in higher education. They believe in the sustainability of the projects that they work on, but really we need more help. We need more support. Um, you know, don't forget the easy ways you can do very little and it actually results in a lot. So it doesn't have to be a full-time job, right? It can be hours, single, single digits that really assist the community. So don't be overwhelmed. This was really just some visuals to help you think about the different perspectives and how you can get involved. All right, so here is the link below, www.aperio.org, content, project, communities. Go in there, read about them. What's exciting to you? What do your institutions really use today and would like to see advance further? Join those communities, be active participants. There's my information there. If you wanted to reach out about more, Unicon's happy to help in several ways um, as well. And I think I have one more perhaps. Nope, that's it. All right. So questions, comments, jump in people. Let's talk about this. How to get engaged. Are you motivated? How can we put this in front of others? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good comment. I think especially those that have joined today, right? And where you are with the teams, you already said, obviously you're, you're dividing and conquering based on the conference and what's available. Um, hopefully you saw the value and you heard the value in this presentation. You know, feel free, use the link when it's posted. It'll be up on the Aperio YouTube channel. You can pull that down and you can share it with your teams. The more people that know, the more growth, the more involvement, the increase in overall, you know, collaboration for the community. Let's see, to grow our community beyond the known Aperio community. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you heard Patrick talk about the Stack Hack tomorrow, right? So what does that mean? That is really exciting. There is interest in the current projects and the current participants of the current projects to really collaborate together and see how we can make a full stack. How exciting would that be? The other so source, excuse me, the other open source, um, many of the other open source um, applications are doing the same thing. There's no reason why the Aperio projects can't do it. And with the variety of projects, it actually is a pretty natural fit. So I hope you join that session tomorrow. That's very exciting. Yeah, Sheree, so I was wondering what your thoughts were. I, I was trying to write short senses <laughs> and three different, but it was supposed to all be one question. But like, where, what other community should Aperio, do you think Aperio would be successful in reaching out to, to, to grow that community, like, you know, what other organizations or groups mm -hmm. that, that you could deliver this presentation to, to find more peers and collaborators? I mean, I, I'll talk specifically like from the identity space, right? Because that's really my background right now. Um, I can tell you that the in common community, um, supported and sponsored by internet too is a big one. They talk about CAS, one of the Aperio projects all the time. Um, having more engagement and overlapping the collaboration, I think could expand both communities and make them stronger just to have the people together. Um, another area I think is conferences, right? Outside of Aperio, but bringing Aperio into those conferences. Um, I specifically am working on a, um, open source for EDUCAUSE um, and trying to get a session in there because I don't think that, or not that I don't think, it's very clear, right? It's pretty much about proprietary solutions. And I think that would be a big opportunity to share, hey, there's these other open source communities out there that would love to have your participation and represent true value for open source higher education. And it looks like Andre here has mentioned it at the uh, SUNY IT conference. Awesome. So some joint sessions with Unicon about identity. <laughs> well, we'll have to get together, Andre, because we definitely would be interested in, in joining in a session pretty much anywhere. We're doing a lot. We're really trying to help support those communities. Yeah, uh, sorry. Ben having trouble with my microphone. Uh, yeah, uh, Sherry, so you, you raised a couple of 
well, not a couple of, a lot of good points in in, um, in your um, uh, presentation and in, in, in the talk. And yeah, like getting involved, um, like uh, you mentioned financial aspect, right? About getting involved, and that's mm -hmm. well, one of the easiest way to get involved, but also the most challenging, probably. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, uh, I, I know we in the past, uh, you know, we had some leftover consulting hours with you we asked to you know address uh, one topic or another and also that mm -hmm. model when you know we kind of yeah, use open source but reach out to you for all sorts of upgrades or issues or something i mean also that uh, resulted in quite a contribution to um uh, like uh, i've seen i've recently seen a couple of like large U portal project i mean uh, issues were closed and those the ones that I mean, a few years back, I spent like dozens of hours trying to figure out, and Benito was scratching his head, and, and finally, you know, when, um, you know, more sorry, more members of community said, you know, that's an issue for us too, then uh, kind of, you know, there was already some sort of an answer uh, to that. Because if if it's about, uh, I mean, I, I know we kind of unique, we using some things that no one else is using, but it's also a refreshing one, you know, like. Um, like Benita mentioned about in in speech about incubation that if there are more than like one adapter or something, then it really mm -hmm. helps, uh, things uh, to grow. And uh, yeah, so uh, at another session I mentioned about that CUNY IT conference. It takes part every uh, every uh, you know every December. And uh, I spoke with one of you guys in the past. Uh, it would would I mean could have been very good uh, exposure for a period project. For your company again um we just never there to um in our own uh, own like uh you know uh, project to showcase or something would be silly to, to to say oh there is such a great tool but guess what we we, we didn't implement it yet but uh yeah, we, we're getting there um yeah and something else i wanted to mention um um yeah so um, I, I know CUNY itself, City University of New York, I mean, uh, as a, uh, it's kind of strange uh, institution, but again, it's it's public university, but uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, PeopleSoft ERP is a main platform, and it's working with all sorts of vendors and com uh, commercial products to build all sorts of add-ons, and it's inclined to work with vendors in terms of, oh, if something goes wrong, uh, we know where the liability goes, as opposed to open source. That you know, that's taking responsibility yourself, and uh, then you have, you know, you have to have really good, you know, support partners and 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 uh, experienced team of developers and and in-house talent. And again, with uh, all the budgets shrinking and and difference between capital spending and and all, all everyday budgets, it's also an issue that it's easy to I know. Um, you know, part with millions of dollars of money as of capital spending, but then then say, oh, listen, we don't need a big operating budget. So, um, um, yeah, and uh, and again, I'm uh, raising this issue over and over that in terms of promoting open source products and Aperio itself, I mean, we're not utilizing a resource that we have access to uh, students. I mean, we are in higher education institutions and. Most schools, I mean, we have CAS department and plenty of CAS students. Some of them are brilliant, and most of them are looking for some sort of uh, project for their portfolio to begin with. And that's one of the aspects that I feel like across all, uh, like, Aperio products for sure, we, we, we're not, you know, we're not using, we're not using the students. We're, we're not, because, you know, professors, they, they like on academic sort of things, right? On, on uh, academic, uh, even, I, uh, IT somewhere under mm -hmm. uh, different uh, management uh, branch, so to say, and IT. Well, in some campuses it's under provost, in some campuses it's under like finance, uh, finance, financial division, finance administration. So it's not always like synergy or connection between the two sides. And uh, there could have been uh, so also long-term private. Uh, even though with you know projects being on GitHub, all that open documentation, uh, everything, I mean it's it's a very nice exercise, a very nice um, you know, project for students, you know, to get used to um, source, uh, I mean, yeah, the source control, uh, collaboration, all, all those uh, things, and 
new portal. I'm, I'm not sure about CAS, it's kind of complicated and quite unique, but things like e portal or even uh, be the work calendar. I mean, those are wonderful projects to poke in and um, mm -hmm. and, and and contribute even like the yeah, documentation, some other things. So yeah, and that's you made some really valid points, and I think engaging the students is a great one, right? I mean, there are many many ways to get involved, and in especially you know the, the more senior they get and. <laughs> They can do so much now at you know such a young age it's crazy right so i think that's a very valid point of getting getting the students involved and what can they do um, yeah. yeah correct because uh yeah like uh dr chuck like he explained yeah it's 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 uh, uh it's not uh like uh, i mean we can't expect from the students to create like mobile app from the scratch in 15 weeks right but if you give them some foundation, let's say you portal start and say, listen, you might want to just work on uh, you know, that little tweak. Uh, yeah, might take a couple of weeks to set up environment, get used to it. But uh, guess what? If you make even one single con contribution those 15 weeks, I mean, you learn a lot and community will benefit. So yeah, I've been in my head like many years by now. Yeah, well, and it's not just the coding. Time. Right. I mean, it's not just the coding. They learn to work with people. They learn to collaborate. They need to brainstorm. They learn to listen, really, which is key, right, to understand where those consistencies are. Because when you're working in an open source community like this, you want to see the consistencies and where are the outliers? And are the outliers things that, oh, maybe we missed and we should be considering those, right? I think that's the big part of it is really listening to each other before we even put the hands on the keyboards and move forward. And, and uh, I love the idea I heard from uh, about Sakai, uh, one of the presentations about Sakai that have the, the, they have like that welcome page for contributors for people who want to join the project, you know, all those yeah. uh, wonderful things, how to get started if you want to contribute. I mean, that, that's a great idea because, yeah, when you look for open source project, you come across and you, let's, let's say cast or something, you can get overwhelmed. What, how do I begin? Even that documentation, <laughs> wonderful documentation can get you overwhelmed. So yeah, that's right. one of the, so the yeah, Sakai community really, you know, they really did a great thing by putting uh, that resource together. Yep, no, you're exactly correct. That was a great option. And that's somewhat like what the CAS community was looking to do as well with the CAS management tool to kind of bring that layer up to make it a little bit more manageable, easier to understand instead of just, you know, all the looking at it from a, a very, very technical perspective trying to put a light overlay on it, which obviously is still a lot of work to do, but kind of with that in mind, uh, with that specific topic in mind. I think we all need to get together and do this somewhere else. Let me know who's interested and I'll, I'll ping you, I'll put you on my list. Anything that we didn't bring up, maybe that you had questions about or you had on your mind before we actually started the session? While we await, oh, there we go already spoke to one of my colleagues as well as in terms of DACAFI and GitHub and possibly decrease the amount of time at tech to spend on the sites. That's excellent. Thanks, Wayne. Right? I mean, it starts right at home, right? In internally communicating to the teams that we work with and see on a daily basis and communicating, especially if you're already using projects or you, you were able to, you know, glean some things from the Aperio conference already. Share what you've learned, share the value. Um, the more people that know, it's word of mouth, right? That's awesome. Well, I do appreciate your participation and I appreciate you joining and um, hopefully you will spread the word and we will see the communities begin to increase. Andre. Yeah, sure. Just wanted to ask you, please keep your talent in house. Don't let any, don't let anyone else go to London or some places. <laughs> hope, hope Drew is doing well. <laughs> you know, London, Google. <laughs> <laughs> I got the message, Andre. Thank you. <laughs> we depend on you. We depend on you. We have an awesome, and I will I will tell you on that point. We've actually increased our team lately, and we're very excited. We're doing a lot of internal training just because there is so much, there is a huge need, right? I mean, I think what it did from a vendor perspective, and I think you all noticed in your own way, but it really showed us that I think people thought everything was okay the way it was. And then 
you know, COVID hit and it was like, wow, things completely changed and we need to look at things from a new perspective. And we're a lot more concerned about security. We're a lot more concerned about access. You know, we're a lot more concerned about understanding what we thought we knew that really we don't know. So, um, yeah, we don't worry. We're taking care of our team that we have and we're continuing to build that so that we can help higher education and all learners at every level. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate all your feedback and your involvement and let's go get them. Get everybody involved in the Perio community. <laughs>